Greetings, everyone. I swear I had a better angle last time. Like the freaking the thing is taking up half the screen. Oh well, whatever. You you, you want to see what's going to be here anyway, rather than me. I might as well just show this and just do a voiceover. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's update time again. Yeah. So as you may have gathered from sort of the new titling format, uh, not really bothering with fancy titles for the updates, um, but rather just kind of giving them a date, sort of a time period. So the last one was like middle of April to the end of April. So this one's going to be the first two weeks of May. So May 1st to May 15th of 2016. And we'll see what goodies I picked up in the past couple of weeks. So we got comic books, Blu-rays, and a novel. Yes. Let's check them out. Update time, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. I really feel crunched in here. I'm like stuck... Hi, guys! All right, okay. Um, let's take a look here. So we'll start with comic books, as usual, because, uh, you know, they don't take up a ton of space, and I can kind of put them in the back there. So starting off, uh, where do we want to start here? We'll set... Uh, probably should have organized them before doing the video, but whatever. Anyway, okay. So starting off, the end is getting ever closer. We have issue number 24 of Big Trouble in Little China. Um, so there's one more issue to go, and I have to say it looks uh, looks pretty cool as far as what they have planned for it. Just going to move that up a little bit. There we go. Just encroach on my face a little more. It, you have no idea how close this is to actually to my face. It's like... <laughs> anyway, uh, second last issue, issue 25, comes out next month. Uh, it's going to be a, a, an extra large issue. They're doing something really big and special. Uh, the only thing I know about it... Well, I know one thing about it, but to say would be kind of a spoiler, so I don't want to mention that. Uh, the other thing I'll mention, though, is they're apparently getting back every single artist who um, uh, has been on the, the series previously. So should be pretty spectacular. It sounds like they're, they're definitely sending it out with a bang. Um, then there's also the Big Trouble in Little China illustrated novel coming out at the same time. And then it was just announced that I believe in August, uh, in August and November, uh, Boom Studios has a couple of other things coming out that are Big Trouble related. Uh, we don't know what the November thing is, but it sounds like the August thing is going to be like a big, super deluxe uh behind the scenes making of uh, book all about the movie. Um, it's the 30th anniversary of Big Trouble in Little China this year and if you want to celebrate it, Boom Studios is the way to go. They are doing tons of stuff for Big Trouble fans. This is actually more stuff than we've ever got before ever related to Big Trouble in Little China. There's also a series of pop vinyls which has um, Lopan, Jack, and the Three Thunders. And I think that's it. It's just a small set but uh, I might uh, might actually consider picking up a few of those as well. All right, so next up, again, uh, speaking of comic books based on John Carpenter movies starring Kurt Russell, I picked up issues 15 and 16 of Escape from New York. So this is the final two issues. So Escape from New York is now done. And uh, that is it. It's It's all finished. There is no more. So... Short and sweet. Hope you enjoyed it while it lasted. So, um, yeah, I definitely recommend this series if you're a fan of the movie. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it definitely has the same kind of tone as the movie, ever so slightly tongue-in-cheek, uh, kind of dark humor. It's not as light and uh, fun as Big Trouble in Little China, very tonally different uh, movies. Um, but uh, if it's by a similar token, if you like uh, if you like what they've done with Big Trouble, check out what they did with Escape from New York as well. There are trade paperbacks of at least well, there's one so far of the first four issues. So I'm assuming they're going to do four volumes, uh, each one having one of the four issue story arcs. Next up, we have the latest issue of Invader Zim. There you go. This is issue number nine. They did just put out a trade paperback of the first five issues, which are the ones that Jonan Vasquez had uh, some kind of direct involvement with. He has now left the series, and it's in other hands. However, I have to say, uh, very capable other hands. I mean, if you just take a look at uh, 
Let me show here. We just take a look at some of the artwork and stuff. I mean, it's very much in the same kind of style. Um, the artwork in the, the first couple issues, the, the post Jonin issues, were kind of hit and miss, but the stories were really funny, so I, I kind of forgave them for that. But uh, but this is really good. And who is it who is writing this one? It was, uh, yeah, it's Eric Trueheart. Oh, actually, no. Written by Eric Trueheart and Jonan Vasquez. I sit corrected. I thought he had left the series. Apparently not. Obviously, I haven't read that issue yet. Um, I have read up to issue number eight. But I noticed Eric Trueheart has been uh, sort of the writer of choice for the majority of ones that don't involve Jonan. Um, and he wrote a lot of the uh, show as well. So, I mean, it's, it's a name that I definitely trust for Invader Zim. Next up, we have a um, revival of a series that I used to collect off and on in the 80s uh, based on toys. I actually still have my old toys of this, and I was really excited that IDW is doing a revival of it. Of issue number one of The Micronauts. So this is a full-on reboot. Um, no ties to the original Marvel series, because the original Marvel series actually took place in the Marvel Universe, so they can't really do that. Uh, no word on if they're going to be doing reprints of the originals. I would love if they did that. If they did trade paperbacks of the originals, I would be all over that in a heartbeat. Um, I should mention IDW is also bringing back another old favorite, ROM Space Knight. Yes, pretty cool. So they're doing a whole new ROM series. Again, full-on reboot. Um, I'm not sure when that's coming out. I think there's a preview issue coming, and then there's the regular series starts a little later this year. Um, but keep an eye out for it if you're a ROM fan like I am. Great stuff. Uh, gotta love ROM. There's a lot of uh, a lot of other IDW comics are having ROM themed alternate covers the month of the debut. So uh, keep an eye out for lots of ROM goodness that month. And again, no word on if they're going to be reprinting the originals because uh, much like the Micronauts, the originals did take place in the Marvel Universe. So might be a little tricky to negotiate the rights there. Um, I don't know. It'd be great if they can figure out a way to make that happen because I think ROM and Micronauts both are two series that are long overdue for the trade paperback treatment because I know there's a lot of fans out there who grew up with one or the other or both and um, it would freaking sell like hotcakes. Like I I'm, I'm really surprised that nobody's found a way to make that happen yet. All right, next up we have issue number five of Back to the Future. This is not the latest issue. They're actually up to issue number seven now. I need to track down issues six and seven. Uh, these seem to fly off the shelves really fast. Um, I ha and I still need to track down issue one. I'm probably just going to have to wait for a second printing on that, hoping they do that fairly soon. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of collecting them for now, and then uh, once I get a solid run of one through whatever, I'll uh, actually sit down and read them. Now, I have flipped through them. I do know that you know uh, enough about them to know that they're worth collecting and ones that I will enjoy, so uh, there we go. And then finally, this was actually supposed to come out a couple months ago. I don't know what the big delay was, but I'm glad that uh, it finally came out. We have the final issue of Pacific Rim, Tales from the Drift. So yes, this is, of course, based on the movie of the same name, well, Pacific Rim, and um, this is the final issue. So I found out, actually, there is two miniseries of this. There's also one called Tales from something else i can't remember now but anyway there's there's another tales from uh one that came out a few years ago and uh it's available in a trade paperback i have kept an eye out for it i've not seen it around if i find it i will grab it because uh, i do love me some pacific rim and then next up i was pretty excited to see this uh there's been a lot of comics based on this particular long-running franchise and the latest are being put out by titan comics uh officially sanctioned by the bbc they were being put out by um idw for for a couple years prior to that uh that license has expired and now titan is doing them uh we have doctor who yes this is a uh, apparently a mini series featuring all new adventures of the fourth doctor now this is the fourth doctor and sarah jane smith and if you take a look at the art the artwork in this is fantastic they really outdid themselves it looks amazing and um i'm really quite impressed by it uh see if we can get a there we go i'm sure you get some a few shots there very nice. So I don't know how many issues it is. I'm assuming at least four. Uh, sort of keeping in tune with the old series. And there's issue number two. Uh, the old series being primarily four-part stories. 
And then uh, actually on the back, we have an ad for the BB, uh, the Big Finish, sorry. The BB Big Finish, yes. <laughs> the Big Finish Audio Adventures featuring the Fourth Doctor. There's uh, several, six series of them so far. Yeah, I really need to pick those up. Um, basically, I'm a sucker for anything with the Fourth Doctor. I love the Fourth Doctor. He was my doctor growing up, so... Um, yeah, so I haven't really checked out the other Titan comics um, because they were more focused on New Who. You know, I'm always more of a classic Who fan. Uh, so when I saw they started doing uh, uh, Adventures of the Classic Doctors, uh, they just started doing an Eighth Doctor ongoing series fairly recently. And then as soon as I saw the Fourth Doctor, I was like, oh, yes, please. <laughs> so it's the Fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane Smith. And I have to say, not only is the artwork great, but story-wise, it really feels like a story from that era. Um, and one thing I actually really like about it is that they're not doing, uh, you know, rehashing old villains that we've seen before. It's all new villains for this that we've never seen before. So it's nice to see that because that's very much what that era was about, was about having, you know, it had a few old villains return, like the Cybermen returned once, the Daleks returned a couple times. But uh, for the most part, it was all new uh, adversaries, and uh, this story is no exception. So really, really good stuff. Uh, looking forward to it. And I will fully support this series. I will even buy the, uh, the collected edition when it inevitably comes out. Speaking of collected editions, got a couple more collected editions. We have Rick and Morty, Volume 2, which I'm actually right in the middle of reading here. Um, another massive saga uh, story in this. There's a big three-part story to start it off, and then two uh, sort of single shots, and then uh, we've got more uh, uh, short short stories in the back featuring the different characters, or sort of spotlighting on the different characters. Um, again, like I said last time, if you like the show, get the comic, because it's just like the show. Um, it, it's been great to sort of tide me over between seasons. Uh, it's like getting an, a, another season of the show in, in here. So this is issues 6 through 10 and, uh, and the short story. So it's the equivalent of roughly six issues of content there. Um, at this point, the monthly comic is up to issue 14, I believe. So probably just... Uh, I, I'm not sure how far along or uh, how far behind the monthly ones they like the the trade paperbacks to be so i'm assuming this is one through ten well i'm assuming four months so maybe when the uh maybe when the monthly comic is uh you know around issue 20 we'll get volume three so a few months to go i mean this just came out the uh, when i bought volume one it had actually been out for a few months i didn't realize it and i read it and i was like well the monthly comics are to issue 14 i bet volume two is coming out soon and the next week there it was on the shelf so i was like hmm Yoink! <laughs> and finally, for the trade paperbacks, this is one that, um, you know, I've been collecting as it comes out. I cannot get enough of it. I will continue to collect this for as long as they put them out, hopefully until the end of this brilliant creator's run. We have Green Arrow, Volume 5, Black Arrow. Now, once again, this is the, uh, this is the ongoing series that Mike Grell did back in the 80s, and uh, it is just fantastic. So, if we just take a Brief look at some of the covers there. Just carefully turn the page, and there we go. And th these volumes are really affordable as well. Um, they're uh, they're nineteen ninety nine American, and then twenty three ninety nine Canadian. So actually, even with the crappy exchange rate we have now, they still uh, they're still quite reasonably priced and affordable. So uh, yeah, this is a great great series that I cannot recommend highly enough if you are a Green Arrow fan. So for those who, for whatever reason, missed my previous updates, this is basically about a middle-aged Oliver Queen who decides to uh, stop messing around and get back to basics. And he, um, uh, so he stops using the trick arrows and stuff and just kind of goes back to using a uh, longbow as just straight-up arrows and relying on his skill rather than on trick arrows because he felt he was kind of getting away from what, you know, what he was trying to do and uh, what he could do. So, um... So he goes back to basics, and that's covered in the story, The Longbow Hunters, which is the three-issue prestige format miniseries. And, uh, yeah, so pretty cool stuff. And you know what? I see we're already at uh, pushing like 15 minutes, so I think we're going to split this into two parts. Uh, so I'll just quickly uh, give you the lowdown on the book that I got, just kind of keeping in tune with the literature theme here. 
I was actually in uh, the used bookstores recently here in town, um, hoping to stumble across some of the Target novels of Doctor Who. Um, as you know, I've been doing my Target Memories series on Timey Wimey Tuesdays. Part three is going up tomorrow, by the way. And um, uh, it, I mean, it really put me in the mood to start trying to track some of those down. So, I mean, ideally, to start that quest off, you want to track them down for a reasonable price if you can, so you hit the used bookshops. I've had a lot of luck with the used bookshops finding those uh, books in the past, so I thought, let's uh, let's give it another shot. So there was only really two major ones in uh, the downtown area here, so I went to both of them, and uh, first off, their sci-fi collection was really lacking. I mean, even similarly massive franchises like Star Wars, Star Trek, and Dungeons and & Dragons did not have a lot of selections there. I was really surprised. And then, uh, uh, as for Doctor Who, uh, I mean, Doctor Who has had literally thousands of books published over the years. Like, thousands. Literally thousands. You'd think they would at least have a few. I mean, maybe even at least a few of the newer ones. Um, but no, they had nothing. Like, literally nothing. Not new or old. They just had no Doctor Who at all. Um, I went to the, the... The second bookstore I had had one. They had one which was the novelization of Slipback, which was the radio play starring the Sixth Doctor and uh, Perry that uh, aired on BBC Radio when the show was on hiatus in 1985. Uh, so great, they have that, except I already have that one. <laughs> so the one that I found in all of the city was one I already had. How frickin' annoying is that? I'm sure there's some other bookstores around. I'm gonna look around and see if I can... Uh, you know, check out some of the other ones. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to have to wait a bit, though, because uh, the budgets, you know, the, the media budget has been blown for this time period. So anyway, when I was in the second bookstore, I did see one thing that caught my eye, so I had to grab that. Got the novelization of Alienation. Alien Nation. Alien Nation. Alien Nation, which um, I actually saw the movie of this in theaters, and then uh, later was a huge fan of the TV series, which followed. Uh, loved the TV series. It was so good and uh great stuff so beautiful condition as you can see i mean this is i don't think this was ever read it's just uh, it's flawless and i mean even inside like the the pages look almost brand new it's uh phenomenal so how much was this i don't even know how much this was it was like three bucks i think yeah so three bucks not too bad can't complain love me some alien nation now there were a series of books uh based on the tv series as well which uh ran a little longer they did more more of those but um uh but they didn't have any of those of course it just seems like n none of these stores uh, here have much in the way of sections for franchises you know it's uh very disappointing but um i don't know might be worth uh, taking a trip down to Victoria one of these days, but uh, that's going to have to wait a while because it's freaking expensive to go down there. Um, I don't know. Let's we'll see. Well, it's not super expensive, but it's it's prohibitively expensive when you're on a tight budget. So, <sighs> and you want to you want to have spending money. You don't just want to have travel money. You want to have spending money when you go down there. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe one day. One day we will go down there, but uh, we'll check it out. And then, uh, yeah, so that's basically it for the comics and the book. So, pretty cool. Um, I have a fair number of novelizations of movies. Maybe I should do an overview of them at some point. Um, that's something I've been kind of tossing around on the back burner for a while. So, look forward to that someday, maybe. Alrighty. We'll see you next time for the Blu-ray updates. I'll post it tomorrow at the same time. Um, yeah, not a ton of Blu-ray updates, but uh, a little more than... Uh, we have time to go into right now. So we'll take a look at those next time. Alrighty. Uh, quick thank you to my Patreon sponsors. Thanks, Patreon sponsors. Please do consider becoming a Patreon sponsor because it's awesome being a Patreon sponsor because when you're a Patreon sponsor, you're sponsoring the show and everything goes right back into the show. So it's good. Be a Patreon sponsor. Big thanks to Kyle Pellegrini, who is currently my highest level Patreon sponsor. So thank you, Patreon sponsors. Yay. That is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for ca Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, and sayonara.